Hey guys, Mike here from Fortinet Guru. Um, today's video is going to be a discussion about IPsec aggregate tunnels. Uh, with the level of complexity is on the WAN side growing every day, um, the need for redundant IPsec tunnels and things like that are growing as well. Most locations have multiple internet providers, right? And uh, you know they have to have IPsec tunnels back to headquarters or to Azure or something like that. And one of the things that we're looking at is situations where if the primary link fails, obviously the, the backup tunnel or the tertiary tunnel need to pick up the slack. And it's all fine and dandy, but a lot of times you end up with a lot of static routes um, and a lot of just bulk that I don't like because I like things nice and tight, neat and tidy. Um, so what we're going to talk about is building an IPsec aggregate interface that then lets you throw multiple tunnels into that interface and then you just have a single static route. It's pretty smooth, pretty cool. Uh, you can do dynamic routing over this, it's very effective. Um, you want FortiGates on both sides for this um, just to keep things streamlined. But uh, otherwise, we'll jump right in and I'll show you how to do it. So this is my 6.2.0 test lab FortiGate. This is the FortiGate that we're going to do this on. So, the first thing you got to do is obviously you got to build the tunnels. So, config VPN IPsec phase one dash interface, and let's see, edit tunnel one. And by the way, guys, there's a Fortinet document um, specifically talking about new features that are in 6.2.0 that will go into detail about how to do this as well. Um, this is going to basically follow that guide for you. <coughs> so we create tunnel one, we want to set the interface to WAN one, S set uh, net device disable, and basically that just takes the kernel out of the situation when it comes to managing the IPsec. Set our remote gateway. For the sake of demo, I'm just going to use quad one, which is Cloudflare. Obviously that won't come back up. And we'll do, yeah, we'll do sample for the password. So. Yeah, pretty much straight and narrow, right? We're going to follow the guide. And then we'll do next, and then we'll do edit tunnel 2. This is our secondary tunnel that's going to provide the other path to the same location for failover purposes. Uh, we're going to set its interface to WAN 2, set that device to disable, set our remote gateway to 1.1.1.1. Helps if I actually type it all the way. Um, Shut PSK sample. And I'm going to set monitor on this one to monitor tunnel one. So tunnel two won't even come up if tunnel one's up. And th that's going to play into the, the way I configure things later because there's multiple algorithms that you can use on your aggregate IPsec tunnel. So, and then you config VPN IPsec phase two interface. And then we'll do uh, edit tunnel one p two. Set phase one name to tunnel one. Next, edit tunnel two p two. Set phase one name to tunnel two. Next, okay. So we have our IPsec tunnels built now. Now what we have to do is we have to go in and uh, actually build the aggregate interface. So to do that, you go config system IPsec aggregate. And then for the sake of this, we'll do edit, and we're going to call it aggregate. We'll set our members, which are tunnel 1 and tunnel 2. Now, remember I ran through and configured the backup tunnel or tunnel 2 to monitor tunnel 1. Basically there's a couple different algorithms that you can use here. And those algorithms are layer 3, network, source, destination. Layer 4 based on session. Uh, round robin means it's just going to round robin the links as necessary and then redundant. Use first tunnel that is up for all traffic. I want to use redundant for my situation because this is not a equal cost link, right? My uh, 
my secondary internet's probably slower, so I probably don't want to use that just for for equal load balancing because it's not going to be this you know apples to apples with the primary connection. You would use redundant as well for like if you're using an LTE connection, you know something where if you're sending a lot of traffic over it, it can cost you an arm and a leg. Now if you have two gigabit symmetrical links, round robin it, layer four it, layer three it, do something necessary to utilize all that path. You know, there's no point in not getting that. But in most situations, the backup link is going to be uh, either more expensive or not as not as good. So for this case, I'm going to use redundant. And basically what we're at is we have an aggregate IPsec interface named aggregate that includes tunnel 1, tunnel 2, and I'm using the redundant algorithm, meaning whichever tunnel's up first, that's the one we're going to use for everything. And tunnel 2 in this case won't come up because of the monitor tag. So the only way tunnel 2 gets used is if tunnel 1 fails. Okay. And go to next. And we have our interface. We have our multiple paths. We have our interface that consumes those paths. Now all we got to do is config router static. Edit 0 to edit the next in line. And then basically we'll set device to aggregate. And then let's see here. We're trying to go to 10.2.2.0 slash 24. So, what we have? We have a distance of 10. Cool. We have our destination of 10.2.2.0 slash 24. That means anything in that slash uh, 24 that's going to be destined over this aggregate interface. And then we don't do anything as far as you know dynamic gateways or anything like that. And then if we wanted to get Q, we could set comment to you know something like that just to give us some less. Click next to get out of there. Now you have your route. So we created tunnel one, we created tunnel two. We group those tunnels into an aggregate IPsec interface easy peasy right and then we treat that aggregate interface like a standard interface so now you can see my tunnel 1 and tunnel 2 now obviously neither one of these are going to go up because Cloudflare is not going to not going to respond you don't see the aggregate interface in the interface list which is kind of blah but it is what it is you can however see the tunnels here and the monitoring now you just have to uh, select your policy. Boom. Aggregate interface. It shows up like an IPsec interface. So you would say, you know, anything from the inside, inside to remote services. Oh, um, oh, we're gonna make this this policy pretty pretty dumb, right? We don't need that, and it's on. This is the policy that allows everything to go over there. Monitor, we can see that both of them are down, but at least we know what's what. Now, to actually be able to look at this and do debugging on the aggregation, you would do diagnose sys IPsec aggregate list. And it'll list the aggregates. And it'll tell you, you know, the algorithm used, the number of member, members, etc. So, very, it's very cool. Uh, it's getting better in 6.2.0. It's available in 6.0. Um, you have to do it in a different area. But basically, you do config sys interface and then you set the type to aggregate. But I think you can only do that on bigger interfaces or bigger FortiGates. But this gives your, your 60E the ability to have what it needs to be a little bit cleaner. Because I would have to have two static routes here with different weights in order to have the failover. And then I'd have to throw both of those IPsec policies in a zone, which kind of does the same thing anyways, right? Um, but, you know, 
Let me delete this policy real quick. You can create a zone anyways and throw your aggregate in there. Now what this would do is for situations where you end up with uh, multiple paths with multiple paths, right? So maybe you want to build four tunnels from your branch to your HQ. WAN 1 to WAN 1, WAN 1 to WAN 2. WAN 2 to WAN 1, WAN 2 to WAN 2. And then you just break this up as maybe, you know, HQ 1, HQ 2 for redundancy purposes. And then you use your zone, that way you don't have to have 900 policies that are all sending the same traffic anyways. Because at the end of the day, the easier you can make life for um, your engineers and yourself, uh, the more effective you're going to be as a firewall engineer, and you can just scale so much easier. Not to mention it helps you get around a lot of these shortcomings of smaller gates, like having 100 static route limits, things like that. You can you can cut your static routes in half and things like that. So, but yeah, short and sweet. Um, you know, it gives you what you need as far as why do you use an aggregate connection? So you can group multiple connections into one. So you can simplify your routes. You can make it just more, you know more fluid. You can use the intelligence of the FortiGate to do round robin or you know layer three routing or um, layer four load balancing based on the session. You know or redundant in cases like this. Um, it just makes it easier because if you're do if you're doing firewalls these days, you're you're going to end up in a situation where you have. A business that needs highly available remote resources that are housed at locations XYZ that have multiple connections and they're going to be real pissed off if their primary internet goes down and their secondaries don't automatically flip over to it so you know it gives you what you need if you have any questions post them in the comments below I know I ran through this pretty quickly um, we're at 12 minutes on the video uh, but yeah just pause replay it I tend to go stream of conscious, so I, I do tend to mi miss some things. So if you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Uh, otherwise, you guys have a wonderful Sunday. Hope your Monday kicks off well tomorrow, and I'll talk to you later.